people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome to a FNAF news update video. However, this is not your traditional FNAF news video, because this video is dedicated to the fan games in the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, we did a video explaining everything you need to know for this video, it's linked down below and there should be an iCord right there. So now that you've watched that video or you have seen it already, let me further explain. A week ago, Scott told us a plan that he has been working on for at least half a year, and that is of course the initiative with all of the fan games. Some of the biggest fan games in the entire FNAF community. Pop Goes, Five Nights at Candies, One Night at Flumpties, The Joy of Creation, and a reimagining of the original FNAF 1 are all part of this lineup. And in the week we've had since that post, there has been a lot of news about these new games. And so I am here to share with you all the news. There is a lot, so I don't want to spend too much time here, but let's say you want to check out one fan game in particular, there are timestamps for this video. Just like any traditional FNAF news video, if you want to go to a certain fan game, you can use your mouse to hover over the, the timeline right here, and it should say, like, this is where we talk about Candies 4, and this is where we talk about Pop Goes Evergreen. So let's say you want to skip to one out of Flumpty's 3, great, go ahead. But let's start off with Candies 4. So Emil went to Game Jolt and he posted this. It says, hashtag Fazbear Fanverse, the FNAF series is officially coming to consoles and mobiles. That's right, Scott Cawthon, the creator of the original FNAF series, has been working with me and some other fan devs on officially bringing these fan game experiences to console and mobile platforms. What does this mean for the FNAF series? In short, both previously released FNAF games, as well as FNAF 4, will be officially ported to consoles and mobiles sometime in the future. However, FNAF 4 will still be released on Game Jolt for free. Now, the big thing about the previous FNAF games is that they contain content and bugs that I'd like to amend. For that reason, I will be working on updating the following games to version 2.0. Candies Remastered, Candies 2, and Candies 3. Of the three, FNAF Remastered will receive the least changes since it is by far the most stable game. FNAF 2 and 3 will receive updates that will change a few visuals, upgrade the gameplay experience to be more fair and balanced, and most importantly, the updates will, hopefully, eliminate bugs and glitches. Though the current builds of FNAF 2 and 3 will be kept on their game pages as legacy versions once games have been updated to version 2.0, the only game not receiving such an update is the original Five Nights at Candies since the remastered will take its place on consoles and mobiles. And to top it all off, there might also be some FNAF merch in the future. Other than that, there is a brand new teaser for FNAF 4 which can be found on the game page. If it seems like I rushed through that post, it's because again, we have a lot to cover so I don't want to spend too much time on one thing. Anyways, let's look at the teaser. So this this is the teaser that Emil put out, and as you can see, it is candy with some little other mini candies, candles, <laughs> as pe some people are calling them, uh, around candy. So it appears that these candles, as I want to call them because that's a funny name, will obviously be a reference and maybe even work the same way as the Freddles in FNAF 4. As we can see, there was four of them, unlike the three in FNAF 4, so how they're going to work, I don't know. They do look very, very creepy, very, very menacing, and 100% out for my blood. If it seems like I'm not going really in-depth with some teasers, it's because, again, there's a lot to go through. So, without further ado, let's move on to The Joy of Creation, The Ignited Collection. Just like Emil Nixon took to Game Jolt and he made this post saying, The Joy of Creation, Ignited Collection. I'm sure everyone is aware of Scott's latest announcement about the fan game initiative, and I'm very pleased to see all the positive responses from the community. As you all know, Scott included me as well as my project on the list of confirmed fan games. I thought I'd make an announcement to clarify what exactly it is and what you can expect. What exactly is The Ignited Collection? The Ignited Collection is a complete remake of the three T-Jock games that includes the original Reborn as well as Story Mode. They will be remade from the ground up, which means new assets, new gameplay, new everything. I'm planning on bundling them all into one application and having the player be able to play them in any order they like. The original T-Jock as well as Reborn will keep their arcade-like gameplay style mostly focused on high scores instead of an actual solid ending. I will try to make those games replayable and fix many of their flaws. The changes to story mode are still not set in stone, but you can expect a lot of difficulty balancing and changes to the story. I would appreciate it if you could help me with this by listing out the things you hated the most about these 
three games as well as the things you loved about the most. How will you handle development? I've been thinking about developing the games openly, showing you direct behind the scenes footage of me working on new features. I definitely prefer this over cryptic teasers or boring character showcases with mysterious lighting especially for a project like this. Let me know what you think of this. My priority is still my job at Glowstick Entertainment and I will be working on the Ignited Collection in my free time. With the scale of the project, I can imagine it taking around a year to make, so expect it somewhere in 2021. Can we see anything? Sure. I don't want to show everything in one go already, but I will show you a comparison of the Ignited Freddy and Ignited Chica. And then he shows this teaser, which by the way, it's just... Wow, the improvement on these models is insane. If I'm correct, these are actual models from Help Wanted that have been ported over and given to Nixon. So I think that is incredible that he is using the official models sent to him by Steerwool and Scott. Of course, he probably could have ported these. I'm not entirely sure if they were given to him, but the fact that these are technically official models are insane. I hope you like these. All in all, I want to thank you for all the support throughout the years, and I want to thank Scott Cawthon for the immense positive impact his series has had on my life. If you have any questions regarding the project, feel free to ask. And Nixon has been answering a lot of questions. I have been sent a few questions and answers that he has given from his Discord server my way. I'll put them up on screen right now. Huge shout out to Nate B for supplying me with these messages. While they don't reveal a whole lot, they are still pretty useful for anyone who wants information on the Ignited Collection. And now we move on to Kane Carter and the Pop Goes Evergreen game. So first things first, Kane put out this teaser of the crow, Stone the Crow, holding his sign that says walk in and drive through. Now unfortunately, I have yet to play Pop Goes for myself, which I know that looks very bad for my image right now. But already off the bat, I know that this is a huge freaking upgrade from Stone's previous model. It looks so, so good, and the lighting, the rain, the moon, the clouds, they all look so amazing and I am so hyped. And I'll say that about every game, I am hyped for all of these. And while this isn't technically new news, we haven't covered it on the channel yet, so I thought I'd mention it here. This is the official look at Pop Goes the Weasel. He looks very creepy, very menacing, those glowing green eyes are actually very terrifying. Now I'm not entirely sure if this is related to the initiative. Um, Kane did say that just Evergreen and Pop Goes Adventure 2020 are being bundled up, so again, I'm not 100% sure this is for the initiative, but Kane did release a community remix for Pop Goes Arcade 2020. There's a whole list of remix songs from the game, and again, I don't know if this is for the initiative, but I thought I'd shout it out anyways. Something else that I should mention that Kane put out recently is this tweet right here. It is kind of small, but I do find it very interesting. He says, the Evergreen dev team has just finished a miniature case study, giving copies of unfilled Pop Goes Pizzeria coloring pages to five family friends. It's three, five, six, eight, and 12 to find out how they choose to color them in. The results are adorable. They'll probably go in the extras. Something else that I should point out is this tweet that Kane put out the other day. Some games will naturally be produced much quicker than others. I think it's silly to wait until every fan game is finished before porting any of them. If one series is complete, then boom, start porting it. That makes more sense to me. So this is coming from Kane, who is in the initiative, but he also is not Scott. So whether or not this is confirmation that when a fan game is done, they will start porting it instantly. I don't know. I honestly hope that is the case because uh, I completely agree with Kane here. I don't think that they should wait for every game to be finished and then start porting them. I think if a fan game is finished, get porting on it. It's also been revealed that Click Team will be the people behind the ports. And so now we move on to One Night at Flumpty's 3, brought to you by Jonah Crow. So he put out this teaser for One Night at Flumpty's 3. As you can see, it has a bloody Flumpty face. It says, did you miss me? And then it has three in the bottom right. Of course, you can immediately tell you gotta brighten this thing up and it does have a secret message. Instead of hiding something creepy here, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I worked on a silly little game series that gained a surprising amount of traction. And I prematurely announced a sequel that was too ambitious for its own good. Although I was proud of some of my plans, most of them felt forced. I wrestled around with this game for a while, but in the end, it was cancelled. Five years later, with some indirect inspiration from Scott Cawthon, I finally determined the source of my problem. I was stretching my ideas too thin over too long of a project. I should have downsized it. 
kept the pots I liked and built the rest around those pots. Then I thought, I can still do that. And I finally found the motivation to rework my plans and give the silly series a proper ending. So, at long last, I made a riddle transfer too. I bet you thought I was talking about a third Flumpty game, huh? Well, you're right, history has a funny way of repeating itself. One Edit Flumpty's 3 will be like the first two games, short and sweet. It's still going to be a long time before it's ready though, so don't get too excited. Just wanted to say for the record that it is really no yoke this time, Chronochrome. Honestly, that is the message that I was really hoping to see after all of these years without a Flumpty's game. That message just... Damn, dude. When I read that the first time, my heart, like, it... It was incredible. I am so, so excited to have Jonah Chrome back and working on a Flumpty's 3 game. And originally, I did have more information to share in the form of tweets, but actually today, Jonah Chrome released a video that basically summarized all of those tweets. Before we get to that, there's another video I need to talk about. He uploaded, well, the news is out, which features a Flumpty laugh and then the, the letter, the number three, of course, the number three, not the letter three. In the video it says read the description, and so I'm gonna quickly read it. The short version is Scott Cawthon got in touch with a few developers, myself included, to have their FNAF fan games officially ported and sold on major platforms, and also sell merch if it all goes according to plan. Scott is supporting us in developing new games, which will be released for free on Game Jolt in addition to being sold in the official bundles. My new game will be One Night of Flumpty's 3. The only catch with this incredible offer is that all references to copyrighted materials needed to be either removed or replaced for the retail releases. So I've already updated One Night of Flumpty's 1 and 2 with those changes, which I hope you'll enjoy just as much. Both the old and new versions are available for download right now. One Night of Flumpty's 1 has a new hard-boiled mode, by the way. I'd like to answer a few questions I've seen. Weren't you done with One Night of Flumpty's? For a long time, I was, but my attitude has slowly changed over the past few years, and honestly, I'd really like to redeem myself for misreading my own motivations and falsely getting people's hopes up back in 2015. I actually recorded my video, The Flumpty Cannon, knowing this announcement was coming, in order to retcon Flumpty's once canonical death and subconsciously prepare people for the possibility of one more game. Secretly, the One Week at Flumpty's 3 April Fool's Day animation I made was also very subtle, intentionally foreshadowing. Is this One Week at Flumpty's? Nope. One Night at Flumpty's 3 is a new project that will stay loyal to the short form structure of the first two games with practically nothing resembling lore. A couple of mechanics from the cancelled One Night at Flumpty's plans may be reworked and carried over though. Is it being made with Click Team? Nope, although Click Team is associated with the project, I'm developing the game independently with Game Maker Studio. Are you sure One Night of Flumpty's 3 will be finished? Yes. It probably won't be ready for release anytime in the next few months, for various reasons, but my heart is in it this time around and I hope it shows in the final product. What was it like when Scott contacted? It still feels like I'm in a dream, huh? I did a double take when I saw his email address and had to confirm it was the real deal. Funny thing is, when I found the email he sent to me, it was in my trash folder really made me question my use of automatic email filters. I think that's all I can say, don't expect more news on this for a while, but it's been super cool and even overwhelming to see the response so far, thank you all sincerely. So even though Jonah Chrome just said that we wouldn't get more news for a while, he actually just released a video today, which I did just mention earlier, and it says what I can say about One Night at Flumpty's 3. It is five minutes long, so I'm not gonna show the whole thing, I'm just gonna show certain clips. I can say, that Scott never told me to make a third Flumpty's game, but he told me I could if I wanted to, and I knew if there was ever a time for me to do it, this was that time. So that's actually a very interesting thing to say, is that Scott did not necessarily tell Jonah Chrome to make a One Night at Flumpty's 3, but he felt like he should. The thing is, I wasn't in charge of when Scott would make the big announcement post on Reddit, and I'm also not in charge of when Flumpty's 3 will release, because it'll have to be at around the same time as the multi-platform ports release, assuming those are successful, and the porting process is going to take a while. This is nobody's fault, but it does scare me a little, because in the lengthy time it takes before Flumpty's 3 comes out, I don't want to accidentally overhype what is going to be a pretty short game. I don't want fans to think it'll be bigger than it actually is. Okay, so that makes a whole lot of sense. I can definitely see what Jonah Chrome is coming from. So now he's gonna get into mechanics and characters, so I'll let that play out. One Night at Flumpty's 3 will be a new game with new mechanics that keeps with the short form structure of the first two. I feel like that's kind of what makes them special. The game is fully planned out and I won't be taking suggestions. You can expect one night, a hard-boiled mode, and almost nothing resembling a plot. 
I'm also not avoiding using any colors. I'm surprised how many people have asked about that, but I do plan on there being a theme to the colors I use the most. A few ideas from the cancelled One Week at Flumpty's plans will carry over. I'm not going to say which ones, but I'll tell you some of what won't make the cut, and basically I'm not bringing back any of my past attempts to force lore into this goofy series. I'm not giving the characters backstories. I'm not including the champ or chump characters whose existence relied entirely on the cancelled story. And I don't even feel bad about that because they were just discount eyesores anyway. I also won't be using the blind monster idea I had for Flumpties 2. I tried to work a blind monster into the plans for the new one, but there just isn't a place for it. So if I ever use that idea, it won't be for a FNAF clone. So I feel like all of that is pretty self-explanatory in the video. I don't really need to add anything on top of it. But Night of Flumpties 3 will be a new game, new mechanics. That's going to be pretty short with one night hard boiler mode. Um, as usual, no practical story, and he's probably going to use the color blue a lot. So there's that. I'm developing One Night at Flumpties 3 with the intent of it being the final game. From my perspective, this game is more like a side project to tie up a loose end, and it's not one of the main things I'm working on. It won't be a direct parallel of Five Nights at Freddy's 3, but it will have security cameras because, to me, those define the gameplay of FNAF more than anything else. Part of the reason I'd really like to end on 3 is because, honestly, I miss the closure that we all felt when FNAF 3 came out. It wrapped things up so nicely, most of us weren't expecting another game, and I still think the first three games are the best ones. It was actually uh, very sweet. I don't know if he was trying to use the music to uh, trick my emotions there, but you know, did, did, did get a little sad there. But I definitely will say I'm happy that Jonah Chrome will be closing the, the Flumpty story, st <laughs> story with this final game. Expect more teasers eventually on Twitter. I'm not sure exactly when, because... I don't know when the release date will be, hopefully this year, but it could go into next year. So if we are going by the theory theory that the creators are allowed to release the games on Game Show for free for PC before the console and mobile releases, then again, I, I don't want to put words in Jonah Combs' mouth, but maybe we could see one out of Flumpty's 3 this year, but he definitely does say that it could um, be released next year. Even if the console and mobile ports aren't done, in time, maybe he'll still release it next year for PC. I cannot say it all. Don't take what I just said as fact. I am literally just throwing my ideas out there, so don't take anything I just said as 100% fact. Listen to what Jonah Kroom is saying. It is his game. He knows what he's doing. Kevin Jr. confirmed. <laughs> Alright, so of course, Kevin Jr. is in the game, and I also do really wish the best of luck to Jonah Kroom in future projects after Flumpties. He's a great guy. Uh, you know, he's been in the community for the longest time. I have not seen a single bad thing about him. Really, any of these creators, by the way, they are all freaking fantastic. I wish them the best of luck. Again, not just for the fan games right now, but also for everything else in the future. And so now we are moving on to the final game to talk about, the reimagining of FNAF, which by the way does have an official name, and that official name is Five Nights at Freddy's Plus. All right, so Phil has been very open about this project. He has listed so many questions and answers about the game that I'm going to read through right now. Number one, what is your role in the Fazbear fan verse? As Scott said, I'll be in charge of bringing you all an official FNAF remake slash reimagining. It's a huge honor and I have a strong vision for it and I want it to be a very special game for everyone in the fandom. Number two, what is another FNAF fan game open source slash FNAF 2 open source? This project was an unofficial test game I made, the reimagined FNAF 2, to learn a new game engine. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Game Maker Studio 2. Scott took it down on release, but he was very impressed with it. So we began to talk. Here's Darko's vid on OS. Or you could watch my video on it. Number three, what happened to open source? Bad news and good news. Bad news is that open source as it exists is definitely not going to be released. Many reasons why, but it's mostly about its open source nature. It could have been modified to just make it a free version of FNAF 2. That's no good. Good news is the game was just an engine test, but its cancellation has opened the possibility for a official, fully realized remake slash reimagining of Five Nights at Freddy's. I like open source and its take on FNAF 2, 
but I promise that this remake will be on a whole other level. Will things from open source appear in the FNAF project? This new game is being built from the ground up to ensure it'll be the best it can be. It's a new take on the first Five Nights at Freddy's, so nothing from open source will be carried over since it is an unofficial remake of 2. Number 5, can you give any details on this new game? The name has already been chosen and we will get to that shortly even though I've already mentioned it. Aside from that, I can't say much for now. This remake slash reimagining carries a lot of weight and expectations and my situation is a bit different compared to the other devs in the initiative. Number 6, what will happen from now on? I'll spend most of my time working on my piece of the Fazbear fanverse. I will be a lot more quiet and hopefully nicer to the community from now on. Teasers will be kept to a minimum, but I hope to show something exciting before its release. Number 7. What do you think of the other games in the initiative? Currently, I have good relations with the other devs, except Jono, who I've never talked to, and also super excited for every game announced, so I wish everyone the best of luck on their projects. I'll also buy all of the merch. Hopefully that satisfies your curiosity for a while. As a veteran fan of the series, this is a dream come true for me. I understand and feel the massive weight of expectations that are now hanging over my head, and I promise to do my best. Insert obligatory winky face here. They are slowly turning into Scott. What is going on? He has more to say. He says, one more thing. Don't be worried about Porkchop's horror show. The pig will get his time in the spotlight eventually. I'm so hyped for that. Oh yeah, and another thing. He says, oh yeah, almost forgot. Number eight, the new remake slash reimagining of FNAF, much like all other games in the Fazbear fanverse, is not canon to the story of the original FNAF series. I'd personally like to think of them as official alternate universes. So no, it's not going to be canon, it's not going to have any lore sprinkled throughout it, though that would have been cool, but I'm definitely still excited for it nonetheless. Phil put out another tweet saying, I'd like to end tonight's craziness with one final poll. Because now that people know what Fazbear Fanverse is, I can finally ask without having to dance around it, when remaking a beloved classic, a remake's most important job is to blank from to the original. The options were improved and expanded, faithful and accurate, unique and different. And it appears that improved and expanded won by a frickin' landslide, dude. The final thing we are going to look at that I have lined up for this video. It's been going on for a long time, but this is the final thing. An official Twitter page for the FNAF remake, FNAF Plus, has been created and it has a teaser up on it right now. I'll leave the Twitter link down below, definitely go follow it to stay up to date with all of the new information on this game, but this is the teaser, and my frickin' god, I am hyped as hell. So clearly, you got the plus logo right there for FNAF Plus, you have the design of Freddy lurking in the shadows, copyright 2020 Scott Cawthon, which is a little weird considering the fact that Scott isn't directly working on this project, but whatever, it is still technically his series. Looking at the Freddy model, we can already tell that it is extremely different from Scott's FNAF Freddy model. FNAF 1 Freddy model, that is, being specific. Um, there's a lot of stuff to mention, most of which I will probably leave out, but just from looking at it right now, the ears are more circular. It looks like the endo is pretty different. It looks maybe a bit more coily. Freddy now has some buttons on his stomach. The head shape is completely different. It looks like maybe maybe the jaw comes out a bit more. I don't entirely know because it is pretty dark in this teaser, so it's kind of kind of hard to tell what it looks like, but it is very different. And I know there's been a couple mixed opinions on whether or not these new designs are going to be liked by the community. Personally, I am all for these. I think they look amazing so far, and I'm literally seeing it in like 50% lightness. Again, I am so hyped for this new design of Freddy and all of the characters. There are two behind him. Whether or not those are Bonnie and Chica's eyes or just some endoskeleton eyes, um, because this image is clearly referencing the first ever teaser for FNAF. I don't know. I don't know who those belong to, but again, I'm hyped for Freddy, I'm hyped for this new game, I'm hyped for all of the fanverse games, I am just, I'm so excited. They're most likely coming out next year, by the way. It seems like a lot of the developers can agree that a, a 2021 release date is most likely going to be the case for all of the games. So yeah, we have that to look forward to. Anyways, we have been here for so long, I'll finally let you go. Congrats on making it through the video, unless you just wanted to see FNAF Plus news, and in which case, go back and check out some of the other news for the other fan games. I've literally been recording for 45 and a half minutes. I'm gonna dip out. I gotta edit this thing. It's gonna be, oh god, it's gonna take a long time to edit. Anyways, I'm gonna get to that. Thanks for watching. More news to come. Goodbye.